You have to go beyond the numbers. Tonight, Dr. Frank George is in to explain one of the biggest discrepancies when it comes to the coronavirus. At the start of the outbreak, death rates for the novel coronavirus infection appeared to be in the 1 to 2 percent range in China. But that's not what we've seen as COVID-19 has moved around the globe and within the United States. Dr. McGeorge is here to explain why there has been such a large discrepancy in death rates, Doc. Yeah, Devin and Kim, you know, many viewers have asked why the death rates from COVID-19 are so high in some states and not others, and then more specifically, why they are so high here in Southeast Michigan. Well, the answer is that we are using the term death rate imprecisely and really not doing an apples to apples comparison. So here's what we really mean. The term death rate implies the percent of people that die of a given condition. In order to know that number, you need to know exactly how many people die of the infection and divide that by the total number of people infected. The problem is that neither of those numbers are exactly known. When you divide the recorded number of deaths by the number of confirmed cases, you're actually calculating a case fatality rate. So looking at data from the state of Michigan from May 19th, the number of deaths was 5,017. Divided by the number of confirmed cases, 52,350, you get a case fatality rate of 9.5%, a concerning number. But here's the problem. Unfortunately, the confirmed cases are from a population of very sick people already. This is Jim Collins, the director of the Communicable Disease Division at the Michigan Department of Health and Human Services. Up until recently, our testing strategy was to look at the sickest people to try to help out in terms of treatment, right? And so those people were more likely to have serious consequences. A lot of our tests were limited to those with severe illness, the hospitalized cases, because we didn't have resources and we wanted to focus on people that we could help, life and death, death decisions. And so we're seeing the impact of that. There are more deaths in that population. Well, a testing strategy that when resources are, resources are limited, targets the most vulnerable people is going to artificially elevate the uh, case fatality rate. Basically, in the beginning, we're testing more of the people most likely to die, skewing the numbers. But there's an even more fundamental problem with a case fatality rate. So in epidemiology, we always talk about the cases we have in our surveillance system representing the tip of the iceberg, right? And those are cases that sought medical care, were tested, and then, uh, and then showed up in our surveillance system as a case. That's the tip of the iceberg because there's a whole bunch of cases um, out there that were not ill enough to seek care. A bunch that were probably asymptomatic altogether, they're still infected. Because those infections go unidentified and uncounted, the number of actual cases is much higher. And if you were to divide the number of deaths by the actual number of infected people, which we don't know, you would find a much lower infection fatality rate. Now, as far as counting deaths, there are some challenges. It's likely that we have undercounted deaths because people died at home without a formal diagnosis of COVID-19. If we added those deaths in, it would actually calculate the fatality rate and it would be much higher. People have also noticed, Doug, a higher percentage of older people die when they're infected. Is that also related to what you were talking about, the skewed testing, or is it something else? Well, so the case fatality rate for older people is actually higher. In fact, it goes up consistently for every additional decade after the age of 40. Mm. So that is a real issue, not an artificial one from mm -hmm. a testing bias. Yeah. Okay, Doc, thanks.